The Amazon is a vast wilderness region with an area of over 7 million square kilometers. It occupies the territories of Brazil primarily and extends to parts of Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, Venezuela, Suriname, Guyana, and French Guyana. Bando, located in the north part of Bolivia, is an area of Amazon with vast forest, with huge potential for biological conservation. The area is covered by ancient forest that hosts enormously rich flora and fauna, with a relatively small human population that is principally engaged in the harvesting of Brazil nuts and rubber. The Brazil nut is a seed obtained from wild Brazil nut trees that can reach up to 50 meters tall and can live over a thousand years. The Brazil nut is nutritious and full of energy and has an antioxidant effect due to the fact that it contains selenium. The exploitation and export of the Brazil nut constitutes 75% of the economic activities of North Bolivia. In Pando, at least 7 out of 10 people depend directly or indirectly on Brazil nut exports. This industry has become a core element of regional and national economy and currently ranks second in value of agro-industrial exports, after soybeans. Six pioneer Brazil nut cooperatives of the region of Bolivia, Brazil and Peru have been exporting fair trade Brazil nuts in the recent years and the additional revenue that they have obtained from the minimum price and the fair trade premium have enabled significant investments in community development programs in health and education in the region. But this ancient system of exploitation of natural resources, which supports biodiversity and the current efforts to trade under fair trade terms, are facing new and serious challenges. Every year, 24,000 square kilometers of dense forests disappear throughout the Amazon. Deforestation leaves behind large areas of bare soil that rapidly degrades, as well as polluted rivers and thousands of people homeless and deprived of sustainable economic activities. In late August, representatives from seven members of the International Nut Producer Cooperative, which is a network of fair trade nut producers who have established their own company, Liberation, in Europe, met in Pando to discuss the issue of climate change and the Brazil nut industry. The participants share their experiences and identify the impacts of climate change that can already be felt in the region, like the change in rainfall patterns, the falling of the Brazil nut pods before the start of the season, trees tipping over due to drenched soil, and others. They also discuss the actions that can help address these changes, adaptation and mitigation. Primero la adaptación, que eh, a, simple, a simple interpretación, lo que quiere decir es justamente adaptarse a los cambios que tenemos ya presentes aquí y ahora. Y mitigación en el, el lenguaje del cambio, del, del cambio climático, se refiere a la disminución de la contaminación que se está liberando hacia la atmósfera y hacia el aire. These two strategies need to be accompanied by changes in environmental and social variables, which must interact. The increase or decrease of climate change impacts will depend on this delicate relationship. Vemos que la cantidad de este gas ha aumentado ¿no? en la atmósfera. Entonces es como si la atmósfera se volviera más gruesa. Al volverse más gruesa esta capa, esta capa que protege y que absorbe el calor, lo que pasa es que el calor del sol es absorbido y esto lentamente a lo largo de los últimos 100 años ha hecho que la temperatura se eleve en un promedio de 0.7 grados eh, centígrados. In this complex and serious context, marketing Brazil nut becomes a good example of a balanced relationship between human activity that allows for economic development and environmental preservation. However, as happens with most agricultural commodities, Brazil nuts are highly vulnerable to fluctuations of the international markets, and the smallholder gatherers, who are guardians of this natural wealth, are constantly being tempted to cut down large areas of forest to either exploit timber, establish cattle ranches, or plant soybean, all of which often offer better economic returns. The workshop reflected on the different policies and strategies being implemented in relation to these issues. Among these, 
The indigenous program for reducing emissions from deforestation and degradation in the Bolivian Amazon, part of the United Nations RED initiative, which is currently analyzing the potential of carbon trading as an additional economic activity for the region. Vamos a ver que el petróleo, el carbón, el gas natural, otros suman el 75% de las emisiones. Y la deforestación es el 25% de las emisiones de dióxido de carbono a la atmósfera, a nivel mundial. Pero si vemos en Latinoamérica, esta situación es diferente. Solo el 32% viene de esta emisión energética y un 68% viene de la deforestación. Cuando yo digo que voy a hacer un proyecto real, estoy hablando, acuérdense, de reducir la, ¿qué? la degradación, ¿no es cierto? Y la deforestación. Another important issue discussed at the workshop was ecologic farming, which proposes the production of healthy food without using chemicals, altering the land use, water or environment, and promoting family farming. Participants also exchange experiences through interesting presentations from smallholder producers from Brazil, Peru and El Salvador. Uh, especialmente la elegante es la que está causando eh, eh, y la que produce eh, echar al medio ambiente mayores cantidades de carbono. ¿Dónde está el carbono? Está en las, en las ramas, en las hojas, en los troncos, en el suelo, en las raíces. Hay una liberación de estos gases. Esto a escalas grandes, no estoy hablando de una o cinco hectáreas, sino estoy hablando de cinco mil, de un millón, de dos millones de hectáreas, hace que la cantidad de gases que se liberen empiece ya a perjudicar. Finalmente, una de las plagas y malezas. Si la temperatura sube un par de grados, entonces los insectos y los animales, la fauna de la zona, tienen la posibilidad de movilizarse hacia zonas más calientes. Y nos genera estos sobresaltos tremendos con las inundaciones. Pero también vemos al mismo tiempo que hay un periodo de sequía que parece extenderse. El cultivo de maíz eh, se perdió. Nos hablaban de que el glaciar que provee el agua a por lo menos nueve comunidades se está derritiendo y que los científicos estiman que en 40 50 años habrá desaparecido para siempre. El cambio climático, sus efectos se pueden observar. Este es el glaciar de Chacaltay en 1940. Esto es en 1982. This workshop provided the space for the analysis, discussion and generation of proposals and are essential to the sharing of information that builds strategies for collaboration and commitments for actions that will help minimize the negative effects of climate change and strengthen industries like the Brazilna industry, which provides a fundamental environmental service. <laughs>